Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Titan Season 4, Episode 10. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, let's start off with the Sebastian and Connor situation. Because Connor's speaking to... Sebastian about, right, the fact is, what did you want? What is your dream? And obviously, we know what his dream was. It was the whole game thing. That's where it started off. But he was kind of a nobody that nobody took seriously. And he he wanted to do something in his mind where it's like, hey, I can bring the world together with this game. I believe in it. But you tell Connor's like got his own angles. Like, why are you going so above and beyond for this whole, like, you want to take, I mean, you were so about killing him beforehand. And you want to stop the Trigon thing. But I'm like, what are you getting out of this? So he's like, right, I'm going to help you fulfill your dream. Come to me. I'm taking over Let's Corp, which he does the big speech. He's like, yo, like some of you heard the rumors about me. Me and my dad were enemies. The fact is he created me, but it's like, no, I am his son and I'm going to do a lot of this entrepreneur. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess humanitarian um, is maybe the word I'm kind of looking for, like helping out around the world. It's like, oh, we're going to end starvation. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. So he's in his like, uh, I mean, Let's not let's not mince words. He's in his Lex bag of. I mean, he always he has already been in his Lex bag. But like, yeah, that Le Lex puts himself out there. Like, oh, I'm a good person, even though I'm like off doing some shady stuff because of my whole like super villainy ego. You know, I mean, I got my ego and stuff, which obviously Connor inherited his father's one of his father's egos. But either way, and he's helping out uh, and put the game forward. And it's like, right, just all you have to do is press a button. I mean, this is also after Sebastian killed his mom. I mean, to me, I was like, that was stupid of you, May. I'm like, why would you talk crap about the person you need? But I don't know if that was just to try and push him to a corner. Like, did you not think he'd actually do anything? Because he's like, no, I have power. She's like, no, you idiot. You don't have any power. The only reason why you have any power is because of your father, Trigun. Without him, you'd be a nobody, which obviously that is his kryptonite. Like, he hates feeling like a nobody. He doesn't want to go back to being a nobody because that's what like Raven you know that's what Rachel said to him a couple episodes ago was like yeah that's you know about you know if oh if you kill me you kind of you fall in your mom's BS I mean even Connor spit that too about like yeah your mom's like you're going to make your own decisions and for him when he killed his mom he was kind of heartbroken but it's also like right it's a mom you never really knew uh who's also it's like right you're hearing from other people she just wants you because you're the end result you you are necessary to get Trigun back that's what this is because Rachel had made that point back in episode eight she had made that point to him of like your mom is just going to use you like my mom used me. Like, they only care about getting close to Trigon. Like, that's all it is. We're a means to an end. And so for him, it's like, oh, for the first time, uh, someone's actually given me a choice. It's like, well, you had a choice before, but I guess for him, it's like, my destiny was so over, like, that. Because, I mean, to be fair, like, he sacrificed himself so that the others could live, and he ended up kind of getting dragged into all of this even further and deciding to be brother blood, but it's still the thing of, I feel like you had your choice, you just made the wrong choice, but it came from a good place, so that's what, I mean, for him, it's a thing of, my destiny, like, was always going to push me. That basically this destiny was set forth and I never, no choices I ever had were out of my control. Now I actually do have my own destiny. And so they give him the infrastructure he needs to put his game out there. We see like the downloads and stuff like that. It's like at the three billion, like a lot of people worldwide are addicted to this game and sucking people in. Even to the point, like, Bernard checked it out just to see what the game was and tries to understand, and even he got addicted to it. And we see, at least with Bernard, but it seems like it happened around the world, a lot of people became neg negatively affected by it because the game is drawing on their life force. So, while this is at, like, it, as um, Sebastian kind of put it, it's like, I'm drawing, I'm breaking... I'm uniting everyone because I'm making us become one. I'm making them a part of me, and that way they'll live on. Their deaths and their sacrifices will be necessary because, like, yeah, some people might have to die, but we'll all, all of them will live on through me. And it's just, once again, it's just, I want, that's why I'm, I'm curious. Like, is he going to end up being, like, the vessel for Trigon that Sebastian will disappear and Trigon will literally just take over his body? Like, you're going to be my body as I, I run over, I run through Earth and conquer it. You're going to be, like, my... 
or you're just meant, or you meant to be like a herald type of situation, like like a, a Steppenwolf on a DC front, or like a a, a Silver Surfer on the like uh, more um, Marvel front. You know, I'm, I'm curious, like which role Sebastian? I mean, we know you're supposed to bring back Trigun, but we don't know in what capacity. So also, you know, no surprise, his mom's still alive at the end. I was like, I was about to say, I was like, really? Are we just gonna like that? Seems super anticlimactic that like the Titans couldn't like beat her, but oh man, her son super can. I mean, he he's super powered up. But still, I was like, would it really be that easy to kill her? I was like, nope, she's bad. So I don't know if she all the damage she maintained. I, I, it almost looked like part of her face was like, especially like her right eye seemed like it was healing. But maybe that was just my imagination. I'm curious, is she going to keep all those burns and stuff? So... Once again, I don't know if that's a thing of, oh, he actually took you by surprise because you weren't expecting that, or you're like, oh, good, 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 good. Like, him doing that was actually part of the plan because now it means that he will be... Because it felt like you would want to coddle him more, especially if you want him to do what you want him to do, but for you to belittle him, call him nothing and stuff like that, kind of trying to put him in this place that it felt like that... Maybe that, once again, maybe that was done on purpose because this is all to push him further down the route you need him to go. So we'll have to wait to see on that front. What is also interesting, though, is when Connor, like, kind of shows moments of having some of his humanity still there. When now, because now you're, I'm at least questioning, wait, was this all Connor playing up a role? Like, was he playing the Lex role or did he just, like, did his humanity kind of flip back on? Um, just funny thing about, you know, flipping on humanities on and off just because, obviously, uh, Joseph Morgan, who plays Blood or Blood, the Brother of Blood, Sebastian, is, uh, was, you know, once again, Klaus on um, the Vampire Diaries and um, the originals, and he had a tendency to kind of make people, like uh, Stefan in particular, cut off his humanity. So it's just, that's what makes me think it's, it's kind of funny. But like, like with the Connor thing, I don't know... Because he is contacting Mercy. He's like, right, I'm keeping Sebastian distracted till you can find me a way I can destroy him. Because he tried to destroy the horn, but it's almost on some, like... Mjolnir Excalibur thing where you cannot move it. He tried to move it on his own. Even as so, super strong as he is, even he couldn't move it. Only though it makes me, I would assume like because Sebastian can move it, I don't I can only assume Rachel would be able to move it too. It has to be a child of Trigon thing. But, um, and even tried to use his heat vision and that wasn't enough. I even love like when Sebastian was about to come back in the room, he used like, he sucked into the, the smoke. I was like, oh, that's actually pretty smart so he doesn't know like what happened? I was like, oh, that's interesting. I also thought it was pretty smooth, the situation where he ended up using his super speed. He was holding the apple, let it kind of drop, super speeded over to the computer, did his thing, and came back over. And it's like, oh, you crunch, you eat your apple super loud. He's kind of like, yeah, it's, it is interesting that they make such a point of that. But, like, that's when, like, I don't know what Connor's whole deal is, whether this is him playing or did he, because he, like, he does show some, like, wait, what? When um, it's like the app was initially, the game was only set to be released to people who are 18 years or older. So now it's like, no, 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 like to get what we need, Sebastian's like, we need to make it so everyone of age who's able to access it can get it. So it showcases some form of awareness, like, okay, so there's still some humanity there, but, and once again, helping out the Titans, which we'll get to that uh, later on. So it showcases, like, so I'm like, I don't know if this is some long con that he figured he could only take advantage of this stuff by being likes, or is it just a little bit more of that Superman came out in those moments? Because it's like he's leaned in more so to being the Lex side of things and not the other side of his DNA. Like he, he's like maybe in that moment, the Superman, the Clark came out a little bit more. I, I don't know. I'm interested to see where things kind of go on that front. Um, but like for right now, um, Sebastian still thinks Connor's on his side, but he's also in a position where, you know, when everything kind of popped off at the end, he ended up losing his powers. So I think the timing is like, right. It's, you know, now he feels like he's nothing. And when his mom comes back, he's definitely going to get swept up again of like, right, I won't disobey you. Like he, he's not in a position to kind of resist her anymore. And especially if he finds out Connor kind of like went against him, he'll probably double back down and uh, double down back to his mom and stuff. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see in that regard. So all the while this isn't happening, we have the Titans trying to figure out what to do next. How to handle this Connor Sebastian situation. Because now Rachel's been told about, like, right, there's a prophecy about Corey dying. And Rachel's willing to sacrifice herself considering the fact is, hey, we're, I'm connected to Sebastian. I'm also a child of Trigon. Like, I can be the one to end this. It's better me sacrificing myself than Corey because they are trying to protect her. They want to keep her as far away from Sebastian. It's like, right, we... um. 
we don't know how, I mean, for the first and foremost, like that ended up happening. I hurt my, like I'm being, me hurt is what hurt him. We don't know if that's going to, we haven't seen whether or not that's fully applicable outside of that town um, from uh, two episodes ago. So I think it still probably is. But the point is they want to try and sever that connection between, um, between uh, Rachel and, um, Sebastian to the point that Dick ended up, he says just a friend, but I'm assuming he's referencing Constantine, gave him a book that would basically bring that manifest that connection into a physical form. I even love later on the person they got to help him, which we didn't even catch a name of who she is, but I guess she's just someone that Constantine knows. And it was like, right, you are a protector. And he's like, sometimes I am, you know, so he's there trying to draw out the, the connection between Rachel and Sebastian and give it physical form and kill it and sever that connection. But while this thing is manifested, it will slowly drain away at Rachel's life until it kills her. So Dick ends up having to kind of do that on his own. He has Rachel to kind of back him up and point him in the right direction. But this thing is elusive and getting away from it, especially because he has to use a weapon that is born on his faith. Like use his love for this child, for, for Rachel, to his love for her to be... Uh, the means why because the blade is just the healed and he his faith and his uh, you know caring about Rachel it's what gives it its blade and ultimately he is able to kill the creature so severing their connection and that in turn rids Sebastian of his power so he got screwed over with the game situation that's a flop which he which he was nervous from the beginning like oh, I don't want to put myself out there on such a large level and then end up falling and he was on top of the world and then like you know Flew too close to the sun, Icarus style, and now, once again, he's back to being who he was before, like, he officially became Brother Blood. Like, he's kind of back to being that frail person. Like I said, finding out about what Connor did without all his power, like, it's definitely going to make his mom more willing. She's not going to, like, it might be a thing of, once again... Maybe he was going to be there to be a herald for Trigon, but now maybe she's like, right, you're too, we can't keep you around. I'm going to sacrifice you and Trigon's going to take your body. Once again, maybe that was always the plan. It's unclear. So we have that. We have Corey. Um, she ends up popping in with Gar because we're picking up with Gar, which he runs into Vic. I mean, first he sees Cliff and uh, Larry, which is, hey, which confirms, uh, which by the fact is they know each other, this is the Doom Patrol from Earth-9 and not the one from the Doom Patrol show that's like, once again, like 24, I mean, 25, 26, or 27, something like that. So, it's also interesting, I mean, because we know Rita exists in this uh, continuity, so maybe it was a little easier to get Jovian Wade at the last minute for this, and maybe like, just, it wasn't possible to get uh, April or Diane. Is it Diane or Diana? It's a, a Guerrera. Like, that's the actress. Is it Guerrera? The actress who plays... Because I, I know April's the actress who plays um, Rita. I, I want to say... I can never remember if it's Diane or Diana who plays um, Jane off the top of my head. But I, I was wondering, like, maybe that's why just, like, it was a scheduling conflict. They couldn't get them in the last minute. So, but they were able to get... I mean, because, you know, they are... Uh, the people in the... Because obviously, uh, Brendan Fraser and uh, Matt Bomber do voiceover for those. Like when they don't have to be there physically, there's other. Uh, what is it, Riley and oh God? What's the other person's name? The the people who do the 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 on screen like the the suited up like Larry and um, suited up Larry and uh, Cliff. They. Um, so then maybe it was a little easier to get them and, you know, Jovi and Wade and not the other. But either way, um, so, I mean, it makes sense, too. So that means on this Earth, like, I mean, we don't know where in their story they are in on this Earth. But obviously things always get weird around the Doom Patrol, always has. But at the very least, Vic, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to know whether, once again, is that a scheduling conflict and and are, are they writing it like oh jane and um rita just weren't here or is that just supposed to be symbolic of this world's doom patrol like we know rita was there in season one of titans so maybe she ended up leaving or maybe she's off on her own and maybe because there, there was no jane for uh titans doom patrol so it could just be like yeah she was never part but vic is here and this vic is once again full-blown cyborg which is so interesting they don't actually refer to him as cyborg they just call him vic so 
I think I mean, maybe that speaks volumes. I don't know. Maybe that's kind of interesting. Maybe this is kind of Vic's early days or something like that. I don't know. We have. I, I, I'm not quite sure, but uh, just kind of obviously showcasing like how vastly different, how similar yet how vastly different things are from Earth to Earth type of thing. And so I think that's just kind of a neat uh, thing. But obviously, I didn't really pay much attention to it last episode. I thought he just landed somewhere. It didn't click in my head that he landed in Doom Manor. And so basically, this version of Doom Manor is like overrun with stuff. It's kind of I guess bleeding over from the red. You know, and as he kind of explains it to Corey, which I love the first thing she did when, like, uh, Vic kind of ran up to her. She, like, smacked him in the face, which there was almost this moment, like, on camp, like, where Vic was almost, like, being like, yeah, no, it's, it's fine. It's like, I was like, is there something, like, it felt like Vic was trying to, like, felt like there was kind of, like, they were vibing. I, I don't know. I don't know if I was reading too much into that, but, um... They did get to just kind of hang out. They even played tennis at one point in time, considering they're stuck in this place and whatnot. There was no getting out. And so, obviously, Gar's like, right. Because, obviously, being there uh, was actually beneficial because, first and foremost, like, one of the video arcades showed up, and it was the game that Sebastian had made. And then later on, they're trying to, it's like, well, let's go out the back door. The back door ended up being how they got access to Lula Corp's, um Luther Corp's uh, systems to get rid of the game and stuff, so it all, it was all symbolic of like, right, it's trying to because Gar was there because he's kind of like, yeah, the red kind of does its own thing. It kind of wants, it won't let you go until it needs to show you something. And so we don't really know. I mean, I guess it was kind of like reuniting Gar with some people he's connected to, especially with everything he's found out about Niles, which begs the question. I mean, he didn't bring it up with the Doom Patrol, but it does beg the question. We know in the Doom Patrol series, the entire Doom Patrol found out about Niles and like the... The fuck shit he was on with like trying to help with the Dorothy and immortality situation. I mean, his own immortality and stuff like that. But we don't know if he was, the, once again, I said he was a dick on both Earths. So we don't know if he did the same thing to Cliff and Larry. Was he responsible like he was on the Doom Patrol Earth or not? So it begs the question. The fact is that Guard didn't have that conversation with them. Makes you kind of think maybe, maybe it's not applicable on this Earth particular earth who knows but um yeah like Corey found herself here for a reason and for her it's because she's been dealing with like the aftermath of like right she's been sitting on it for a while everything went wrong because i didn't kill sebastian when i was supposed to and uh, now she's like she felt like hate was kind of like the reason why she needed to go back because she hated sebastian but for her it's like no it's not about hate like Kicking it with them, like playing tennis and stuff like that, which I even love Cliff being who he is, kind of making a point about how the fact is that it's like, oh, guys, I know you both went through your respective situations and don't most likely don't have penises anymore. But it's like, yo, can you get your heads together, like getting it in the game or whatever? And so there is this situation of. um God, I forgot what it was. Oh, yeah, because uh, Gar was like, oh, do you know in and out And uh, Vic's like, oh, yeah, I recently got acquainted with that because of uh, because of your mom. And it's like, yo, first and foremost, like, that was a good dig. But he also says, like, oh, does it feel very cyborg of you? Uh, does it, I think he did actually refer. Yeah, he did say cyborg. I have to correct myself. Earlier, I was like, they don't refer to him as cyborg. In that moment, he did. So I was like, OK, never, I completely forgot because they just referred him as Vic. I guess it's a thing of like, well, we don't really need to go by each other's code names. Like, oh, yeah, I'm Beast Boy. You're cyborg. You're robot man. And you're negative. Like, you know, we don't need to do that. They should call each other by our names. Like, they really don't really lean into the code names except other people do. But amongst themselves, of course, they're not going to really lean into that. But either way. When it's all said and done, uh, I, I, I just love even Vic being like, really? That coming from you about that? And Cliff's going to like, yeah. But anyway, the point was that Corey realized, like, right. Um, for her, what matters is, like, Gar, Dick, Rachel, and just, like, the time they've spent together. Like, that, though, my reason for going back to try and stop all this shouldn't be, like, because I hate Sebastian. I shouldn't let that fuel me. I should let fuel me the fact is i'm going back to protect everything and everyone that i love so kind of leading with love rather than hate type of situation so i thought that was really interesting and so ultimately what was going on in uh outside of the red in um with sebastian and all that was having an effect on that world and so they tried to go, they went through the back door and then they ended up in a room that started shrinking so they're doing everything can to like hold it off so obviously a combination of Gar, 
uh, Vic as well as um, the negative spirit ended up kind of helping release him. We don't. We can only assume Larry and Cliff ended up back in regular Doom Patrol. And they're if you know if there is a situation of they along with Vic, they, Vic, Larry, and uh, Cliff, maybe they don't. They return and like then if you know Rita and Jane are like what happened? Like if they are in, on this Earth as well. Uh, either way. Cause we once again we don't know what drew them in, but once again we know that Gar has some stuff to figure like needed to be here for a reason. And like I said, having kind of both families, his Doom Patrol family, because of everything like what I brought up earlier, like he found out about Niles, but also having a little bit of his own family here who also needed to be here in that regard for Corey. So when it's all said and done, though, they managed to. Uh, get out. I even love that Cliff's like, yeah, but before I die, I need to let someone know that there was a certain person that he referenced like having sex with or whatever, and it's like, oh, I need someone to know this really, really interesting thing, and even Vic was like, yeah. I even love Vic said the signature booyah, which is funny because obviously, like, I want to say the only time Vic has said has he said booyah post it? Because I remember in season one he said it, but that wasn't really him. That was actually Mr. Nobody, like, screwing with everyone. So the only, like, legitimate booyah of, like, season one was that. But I don't remember. He probably has said in, like, season two and three of, like, Doom Patrol. And I, I don't think it's come up in season four. I, I, my memory is god-awful, so I could be mistaken. So, But either way... um, Gar is back with the Titans, and that's nice. And also the fact is that um, you also have Corey back, and I think a lot of that's going to help her kind of going forward, and that might even make her lean even more to, like, I'm ready to do what I need to do. If Destiny says I need to die, then so be it. It's interesting, too, because the lady who was setting up the whole thing for Dick and uh, Rachel ended up saying, like, oh, you, like, death remembers you know, and the fact is that you kind of escaped this graph, but, like, death has a really good memory because you died and came back. So, we'll see. Maybe that's the only reason why he was kind of applicable in this case was because of his special circumstances. And I'm wondering, is that going to, like, connect in any shape or form with the whole Corey thing? I, I don't know. There's still, there's, it's going to be really interesting ultimately to see where all this ends up taking us. Next episode should be the penultimate episode. It's only going to be, uh, yeah, because six episodes in the back half of the season. So, it's going to be interesting to see what the pen, what ultimately goes down in the penultimate episode and where that all leads us into when it comes to the series for now. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how this all plays out going forward. So, But um, really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.